also another off-putting thing is just smashing it with toes. I don't want to be a part of that. I, who wants to? Who wants it? That's I, toe I want, juice. I want a picture of the person smashing the grapes before I drink it. Yeah, maybe. So I, I can know. decide. I, they need. To, that's what they need to have on the label. This is the person that smashed these grapes. <laughs> I do, and then I, you can decide whether or not you want to drink the wine. I mean, I hate feet anyway. It doesn't. It, 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 that would not make a difference for me at all. Like I just like little toe jam crusties going into the bottle. And, no, no, thank you. Uh, <laughs> there's nobody that you would drink the wine of if they if they crushed it maybe Salma Hayek okay. from uh, when, b- back in the day when she was in uh, From Dust to Lawn 3, 2, 1 it's all over now welcome gamers and geeks episode 10 10 Old Guys Geekly Review, episode 10. Yeah, we are Ogre, Old Guys Geekly Review. We're going to be covering September 7th through the 16th, and we're going to be talking about movies and TV and lots of other geekery. So strap yourselves in for a good episode. I'm here with the Notorious Nick. Yes, and I'm sitting next to my man JD, and we are about to uh, just dump just take massive, <laughs> massive geeky dumps on you. Oh yeah, I'm I'm sure they're ready for that. That's what they've tuned in for. Yeah. Uh, anyway, how, how's your week been? Oh man, it's been it's been a week. It's a uh, jeez. Yeah, just been a week. Just been, I, just I, been I, a week. I don't even want to talk about it. Okay, yeah. well, we you know what? The reason that a lot of people tune into us is because we don't talk about what normal people talk about what you're seeing on the news all that stuff you can escape for a little bit yeah. come into your little geeky world yeah hear about the things you truly want to hear about ogre will be your salvation from uh from all bad news all bad news. well maybe not because we get we get we do hand out vegetables here every once in a while yeah yeah, yeah we we do yeah we do. but uh but anyway let's let's wrap into it uh do you want to start with the emmy awards the yeah. creative art emmys so the creative art emmys I didn't really know this because I was like, okay, we did an episode with the Emmys and the Ogies. We did our own awards yeah. not long ago. And I was like, well, why is the Emmys coming back around? Well, it turns out, uh, I guess about 10 years ago, the Emmys started a category for what I'm going to call all of the underpaid, underrecognized people. Mm-hmm. So they, they call it the creative arts. So it's the, the artists the a lot of the people who do a lot of the heavy lifting but don't get recognized so it's um it's some of your um you know it's the production people, people. yeah production people yeah. exactly it's for like uh recognizing technical behind the scenes people mm-hmm. that kind of thing so so that's what this uh creative art emmys is for and which is strange because some of it's not behind the scenes people and well, anyway it's confusing but they got some <laughs> new categories and uh, I say we we were right on the money. So back last year when we were on YouTube and we did our end of the year video and we talked about some of our, our favorite things, we had this in our list. Okay. So our top animated mm. show was Arcane. Yeah. And Arcane won like four categories, mm. including the best animated show. Yeah, isn't it the first one that got an animated Emmy? Uh, it's the f- first. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I'm not exactly sure. It, it was the first. It was the first in something. Yeah, the but, first. Oh, the first streaming series to mm-hmm, win an animated right. Emmy. Yeah, in the outstanding animated program, uh, like the last two years has been Rick and Morty, mm-hmm. which you know, rightly so. They were up again this year. Um, but if you haven't seen Arcane, it's something special. Yeah, get on it. Jump, Tonto, jump on it. <laughs> <laughs> jump on it. <laughs> right? Ride that Arcane horse into yeah. a bit of uh, confusion about why a video game show is so good. Yeah, it's uh, if you didn't, if you're not aware, it's uh, it's from a studio that is owned and operated by artists themselves, and that's that that, that in itself is pretty special. Yeah, it yeah. really, really shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they won for Best Color Script, Best Art Direction, Best Background Designer, um, as well as the, the Top Animated Series. So, yeah. Damn. Lots, lots of love. Yeah. And we mentioned another show 
uh, that we didn't put on our list, but we were like, why didn't we put it on the list? And I wasn't thinking about it because it was, uh, yeah, yeah, because it was a bunch of shorts mm-hmm. instead of like a series. But it won for the outstanding short animation. Oh, good. Yeah, so good. love Death Nerd. Oh man, and and it won for the one that I am just completely emotionally like enticed by, scarred by, mm. uh, Jim Bidjo. What was that? It's the very last one in the season. Oh, with the the girl. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. The one that, that the one that Jim was Bar- all over the trailer. Jim right? Barrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That thing. It's it's got no dialogue. Yeah. But it is so emotionally powerful. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, it's just it just takes my breath away. Yeah, it's a great uh, little great episode. Yeah. So yeah, Jabaro. Yeah, and it, it won for uh, best character designer mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, as the uh, the best short films. So. Yeah, pretty well deserved. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was, yeah, the whole thing, the whole episode was beautiful. Yeah, it was so done very well. Highly recommend both of those. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen the third season of Love, Death, and Robots, if you haven't seen Arcane, definitely check those out. Yeah. I almost wish I never saw them so I could just experience them again. <laughs> and they, they were both emotionally fulfilling for me. Yeah. Just so, so much emotion for me on those. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. A uh, little shout out to Chadwick Boseman because he uh, he picked up a uh, winner for oh, uh, yeah. Outstanding Character Voiceover. So, miss him still. Yeah. Wakanda forever. Yeah, Wakanda forever, baby. Yep. Good stuff. Oh, what do you, uh, what's that? Let's hop in a movie. Movies. Mm-hmm. All right, what, 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 have you, have you watched anything? Oh, I, I did, didn't I? Didn't I? I did. Um, what, what have you watched while I'm thinking about what I watched? I watched The Samaritan. Oh, okay. Yes, I, I, didn't watch all the Samaritan. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you make it through? I did. Um so if you like nineties action movies, probably probably worth a watch. Yeah. If you enjoy them. Um the CGI is pretty much on point with uh nineties movies as well. Um uh, a DH Sylvester Stallone makes an appearance and it is uh comparable to the scorpion king in the mummy returns <laughs> cgi um which the rock did come out and thank brandon frazier for the scorpion king yeah and yeah. brandon frazier is going through a lot so he obviously needed that mm-hmm. lift up there well i but watched yeah, samaritan I'm, yeah it, it was okay mm-hmm. the, i predicted it very 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 early on uh who sylvester stallone, stallone was and, and everything mm-hmm. um worth a watch uh then got it's on prime because I don't think I would have rented it or bought it if, if it wasn't. Or regretted renting it or yeah. <laughs> watching yeah. it in the theaters. Yeah, because if I did have to pay money for it, I probably would have been a little bit upset. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's definitely one of those, I have nothing better to do, mm-hmm. this is something that's going to entertain me for a while kind of yeah. movies. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's the, that's the only new thing that I watched uh, this week. Yeah, I guess all the things I've watched have been TV or anime, because I can't, like I did watch part of the Samaritan. Yeah, time, but what, what, so what? What part made you shut it off? <sighs> I'm curious. So honestly, it was the kid. Yeah. Um. Not that he did a bad job. I just wasn't really interested in that whole kid storyline. Mm-hmm. And and so I kind of like fast forwarded through some of the parts. Yeah. And and caught the gist of it. Um. I don't know. Sometimes it's it's the. I just wasn't in the mood for a kid oriented flick like that. Yeah. I mean, whatever. Yeah. So. Did you even make it to the CGI though? I I missed the part you were talking about. <laughs> oh, it's bad. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's the 4K TVs that we're getting and stuff now. That just Oh man. Cuz I watched the uh unbearable So I also watched uh The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent again. Oh, okay. And the DH Nicholas Cage in that is okay. You know, it's not as terrible as The Scorpion King or mm. or Samaritan, but you can tell. You can definitely tell. And then I also watched the um Everything Everywhere All at Once again. Oh, I I'm wanting to see that. We're capable of making pretty decent CGI. I'm not sure why it's not incorporated in some of these big I'm sure it's money. Yeah. Well, um, I don't. I don't know because you know. Well, yeah. Now isn't when it comes, Bezos like one of the richest people on the planet. <laughs> yeah, but you know, when when I think about it now, it could be talent because we had that whole Mandalorian thing 
where the YouTuber was able to do the deep fake better than oh, the person yeah. that they hired. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's talent. Maybe it's just talent. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe so. All right. Uh, so what do you got for up like news and stuff for movies? Well, uh, the box office this weekend was just such a wild ride. It was incredibly slow. Uh, the top grocer was Top Gun Maverick. Mm-hmm. He, it's been out for 15 weeks now mm-hmm. and is the number one movie. Wow. So even though it's on video on demand, so... People are still going to the theaters just to watch it. And, I, and you know what? You I kind of wish I did. And, and that kind of... I don't know. People are saying if it's on video, people aren't going to watch it in the theaters, but that's obviously wrong because mm. it's out on video. You can watch it. Well, didn't we have a day... Wasn't it? Wasn't it three dollar day? Yeah. Saturday was three dollar day at most theaters. Okay, yeah. God, I wonder. I wonder if that it, it would be interesting to see how successful that that whole thing was. Like just to be able to tell if that brought people back to the theaters because I know oh, they're it struggling. Did. It it did. Uh, numbers were up, mm-hmm. but it it didn't like make a good weekend. Yeah, but numbers were up from the previous weekend. Oh, that's good. That's good, at least. So as far as saving the theaters, I don't know if it saved the theaters, but it did bring in a lot more people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it probably won't save the theaters, unless no. they do it like once a week, and not once a year. Well, what I think is interesting is number three was a re-release, and number eight was a re-release for this weekend. So two movies that are back in the theaters are making waves. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, Oh, God. Was number three. And so back in the theaters, what, a year later? Yeah. And I've never seen so many re releases. And yeah. It, Hollywood's getting lazy, man. And the movie that made the most money per theater, mm-hmm. Jaws. Damn. You know, I know I never got a chance to see that in the theaters. Oh yeah, exactly. And there's that man, that the part where the the head comes out of that fucking boat in yeah. the water. It gets me every time. And I think it's just because they kind of offset the music to oh, where it, the head pops out. It's well made. Yeah, it, yeah. it gets yeah. me every single time. Yeah, so my question to you is, are we going to see more of this now that we've got movies breaking into the top ten who it's been released before, they're putting it back into theaters? If it's working, I guarantee you we're going to see a lot more of yeah. it. And then uh, there were some specialty theaters like the Alamo Draft House. Uh, I'm very fond of that place, and they would release um, older movies. They'd yeah. replay them in the theaters a couple couple showings. Um, that's how I got to see Hackers in the theaters. And yeah. um, for for that sort of stuff, absolutely, I I would be very very down to go to that stuff. Yeah, I I am going to make a prediction that we're going to start seeing more and more of these high stakes re releases. Mm-hmm. Um, than we've ever seen before. Yeah. In the in the past ever in the past. Yeah, it's gonna throw that uh like Avengers Endgame and Avatar fighting for the top spot and yeah. stuff. It's gonna throw yeah. a loop in that. Avatar comes back to the theaters too. Yeah, yeah, they already removed it from Disney Plus, yeah. I think. And and I think this is showing that the theater experience is still valid. Whether it gets released on video on demand or whatever, you know, some people want to see it in the theaters. Yeah. And that's great, even yeah. if it's old. Yeah. Dude, a- every time I go to the theater, I have an ex- uh, just a bad experience. Which is why I don't yeah. go. But yeah. But other people like it, and I don't want to take that away from them. So yeah. I-, I hope the theaters stick around. And well, At least this isn't like Miami theaters. Like, I did I tell you what happened in the Miami theaters? Uh-huh. We went to go see Endgame. Okay. Theaters packed. I No, I vape. Mm-hmm. I vape because I, I quit smoking regular cigarettes, so I vape. And, uh, you know, I, I knew it was a three-hour movie. Yeah. I decided to leave my vape in the car because I'm, I, uh, I, you know, p- other people paid sure. money. And yeah. I'm not I'm not paying for their, their tickets and stuff. People in the front row, just a fog machine of vape. Uh, uh, weed, uh, d- just regular vape, yeah. stuff like that. God, it was so, so freaking terrible. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, just about just a terrible experience all around. Yeah, I I, I prefer movies yeah. at home. But uh, coming out this weekend is one. It's going to probably be another slow weekend. But I had never heard of this one before, uh, called Brahmastra. Mm-mm. It is uh, it's it's uh, basically Bollywood meets the MCU. Oh my god! Ooh, 
I, I predict a lot of memes coming from this. And, and I, I wasn't even <laughs> going to watch the trailer until I realized it's a Disney production. Oh. And so I watched the trailer. It looks pretty good. I don't know. I don't know that it even has an English dialogue to it. It mm-hmm. might still be uh, Indonesian. Uh, I'm not even sure what the, uh, but it's Bollywood. So, uh, yeah. So I was like, oh, this looks pretty cool. It, it's got some pretty cool special effects. It's got a lot of action, and it, and even the cover of it was like it looked like a, a you know an 80s harlequin romance novel cover <laughs> yeah and and it wasn't until i watched the trailer that i was like oh th- this is pretty cool i hope it does well Bra- brahmastra yeah okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and sh- uh share that to the facebook page yeah. real quick and uh and i will watch it later but you guys can go there right now while you're listening and watch it tra- actually no wait till the end of the episode <laughs> yeah don't go now yeah. you might miss something yeah at least pause it yeah. Uh, so Brahmastra uh part 1 Shiva is uh is hitting a wide release, not not limited, so wide release for next week. I hmm. I'll probably end up checking that out at some point. Hopefully it'll be on the the Disney Plus since it's a Disney show. Yeah, maybe I will too. It does it, you know from the little thumbnail that auto plays when you go to YouTube, it does look kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. That, and that's all I've got for movies. All right, well, let's. Uh, I got a few things. Uh, Sebastian Stan and Seth Rogen are making a GameStop movie. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I'm, is it about the stock meme? Honestly, I have no idea. Who, yeah. I didn't. I didn't read it because, uh, you know, Seth Seth Rogen and James Franco have kind of just fallen out of the limelight for me because mm-hmm. James Franco because he's a, you know, a, horn, a little horn dog, and um, uh, Seth Rogen he just started bitching about the mcu and how it's killing Uh, all the goofy comedy movies and stuff uh with the humor that they're throwing in so i don't i don't know i haven't really um followed him too much but sebastian stan's in it oh yeah and and he's actually a pretty good actor i I loved his part that he played nightonia that's what that was a pretty decent movie so um yeah if you're if you're interested in that uh go ahead and read up about it i don't have a title for it i just saw the headline right before i came over here yeah, I wonder if he'll be ripping off Clerks and doing like a. Uh, God, I hope not. Yeah, I know. God, uh, I hope not. That would that would probably end his career if he rips off, off Kevin Cl- Smith. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop Four has started production. Oh, uh, really? Yep, it's going to oh start. Oh my God! Uh, Eddie Murphy, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and it is going to be a Netflix. Wow, yeah. I love Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Oh yeah, yeah. He he's so much fun. Yeah, so much fun. Uh, let's see. Me Time gives Kevin Hart and Mark Wahlberg their lowest ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh. Yeah. Ouch. Kind of well-deserved. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, it was a movie. It and was it a def- movie? Yeah, it definitely came out in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely had Mark Wahlberg and Kevin Hart in it. Had actors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a few other actors, too. Uh, Enola Holmes, too, releases November 4th on Netflix. The first one was pretty decent. Yeah, the my daughter really liked it. And apparently, there's a reboot of The Crow, starring Bill Skarsgård. That's oh. uh, that's in the oh, works. God, man, Sarah's going to be so torn about that because her The Crow is very dear to her heart. She mm-hmm. loves it, but she hates reboots. Yeah, but she loves Skarsgård. Uh-huh. So she's going to be all kinds of conflicted about this. Yeah, this is going to tear her up. Just, uh, get her her favorite snack. Break the news to her easy. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I don't know if she's anything like my wife. You just kind of leave her alone for a little bit. Yeah. So she can go through the phases. Go through the phases. <laughs> deal with the emotions. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's all I got for movies. Okay. So let's cool. move it on into television. 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 She-Hulk? Yep. Yeah, another great I, episode. I loved it. I, I thought it was great uh, bringing in Megan the Stallion. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's quirky. It's funny. I am so into the fact that the MCU is going other genres and places. Yeah. And, and well, and even more so that they're still tying in the the other shows. Yeah, it ties ever. in way more than any of the other ones did, yeah. and it's working. Oh uh, God, and Wong is cracking me up. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Wong. Yeah, he he, <laughs> may, he always makes really good escapes, <laughs> especially in this show. <laughs> He's oh, so that, that cracked me up. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So if you haven't been watching She Hulk, ignore the haters out there. They don't know what they're talking about. It's a good show. Yeah, apparently all the misogynist, uh, misogynistic comments that they played on that episode were based on real yeah. 
real comments from when they announced it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it, it's so meta that way. Yeah, um, but it's it's a great show. It's yeah. A great show. Um, also, keeping on with the with the crappy comments and stuff, uh, Aaron Moriarty, uh, who plays Starlight in The yeah. Boys, she says she feels silenced and dehumanized by the uh, by all the comments uh, directed at Starlight. Which is which is kind of sad. Like I, I don't know. I, you, you know, I'm a man. I was I was taught to be the knight in shining armor, not be the damsel in distress and everything like that. But I gotta say, um, I wouldn't mind being the damsel in distress for some of these like superhero. Ladies. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? Maybe I would like to know what it feels like to be rescued. Yeah, I know. I, I'm right there with you. Yeah, yeah I, I hear I hear where you're going with this. Yeah. And, and that's that's not bad, but yeah, the the comments and stuff. I don't know what it is about people these days, and, and the fact that they choose to hate instead of just ignoring. Well, social media gave everybody a platform, yeah, and everybody, you know, you get you get a few followers or a few friends following you on your timeline. They give you likes every once in a while, and then all of a sudden, you just gotta give your opinion to people. Yeah, the, the hate watching is just out of control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The golden rule is if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go find something else you like. Yeah. Because not then, everything's made for you. Yeah. And yeah. Ev- eventually, these people are going to say it to the wrong person. And then the Mike Tyson effect happens. <laughs> <laughs> We're in 2022. That's all yeah. I got to say. <laughs> Just be better. <laughs> be better. Be, uh, th- those are wise words, my friend. Wise yeah. words. Uh, Rick and Morty. I watched that. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of the first episode? I, Season I six. It, I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, I like how they made references to Evil Morty. I'm. Uh, it's weird that we get the what was that the original Rick? Yeah. Um, so I I always thought that the Rick that we know is the original Rick. Um, the one from the flashbacks. Uh, right. Right. Uh, yeah. So, man, it was a, it was a lot to take in. I'm probably gonna have to watch it again. Yeah, there's a lot of timey wimey yeah. multiversey oh, God. stuff going yeah, on, I and got it's that hard. Reference. It's it. <laughs> I understood that reference. <laughs> a little Doctor Hu- Doctor Who MCU <laughs> going on. Uh, yeah, so um, it, it's difficult to keep track of all the Rick and Morty stuff. Yeah, um, for me because I I'm I'm not a scholar of it. So. Well, and it might be uh, even harder because Dan Harmon is kind of given uh, the younger writers the reins so they can make it more relevant for. The, the more uh, their their target demographic, okay. um, yeah. Keep the keep the young people watching. Oh God, I'm I'm not gonna understand half the things that are going on now. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure they'll <laughs> explain it. That's the that's the benefit of having the whole gamut of ages writing yeah. for the show. You know. Yeah. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. So that that yeah. I mean, I have nothing bad to say. It was a uh, it was a better episode than some of the episodes last season. Definitely. Yeah. And, and if it stays on the kind of level that the first episode came out, I'll enjoy this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all I got for TV. I don't have much news or anything. Uh, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, first two episodes of that hit. Oh, excuse me. Uh, my initial reaction to it was it's so beautiful, so majestic haven't connected with any of the characters Mm -hmm. it's very basically they took they made four lord of the rings movies and chopped them up and put them into these episodes in some order um and so they don't feel very connected to me right now they they don't but i've got to say that i'm kind of i'm interested to see where most of the stories go it, yeah yeah um, and, I, and i have a feeling that they'll bring the storylines together yeah yeah but right now the first two episodes it just feels a little disconnected to me yeah it's 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 very pretty oh, it's a it's very gorgeous. pretty show um my only gripe is that before i watched it um i was reading all the all the stuff online like how dare you put people yeah, of color watching. in here yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh uh it stuck out like i don't mind it at all uh, I in fact I think it makes the the shows more authentic. You know, it it, it resembles real life more. Yeah. Oh, um. Yeah. But my God, after reading that stuff, it just has really stuck out to me, um, which is kind of sad because uh, I'm letting people ruin my experience. Yeah. That. that don't yeah. do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't do that. Uh. But I, I, obviously, I've got I've got nothing but uh, high hopes and uh, and well wishes. For the show, <laughs> taking a little part from Bilbo's speech there. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, all right. So so I'm going to keep watching the Rings of Power. It, oh yeah, it's definitely good enough for for that. Hopefully, uh, it, yeah. If if things in, yeah, watch it for the visual beauty. If nothing else, but yeah. I, I think I'll grow to like some of these characters as well. So. Oh yeah, I kind of already like, and I don't remember the the dwarf that or the the elf that went to the dwarven kingdom and had the little endurance fest. Uh, oh, Elrond. Test. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah Elrond. He's, he's Elrond. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then they also made the the Smith guy. And isn't that the same guy that does the smithing in uh, the video games? The oh, that I don't know. The Shadows of War and Shadows of Mordor. Quite, quite possibly. I think it. I think it is. I think mm-hmm. it is. I'm not for sure. We'll have to. We'll have to check that out. But yeah, I mean, there's there's a few tie-ins. So far, they haven't ruined it, which is good. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely not ruined. Yeah. No, yeah. by by any stretch, definitely not that. Well, we got plenty of new shows coming up next week. Okay. Um, we've got something called Last Light on Peacock, which is uh, that the actor that was in Lost, the lead guy. Um, the one, the Matthew sexy one something. with the long hair, or the sexy one with the short hair. Short hair, okay. short hair, sexy, <laughs> not long hair, sexy. <laughs> I don't remember. Is it's been a while. Uh, it's it's a world ending drama, basically. For some reason, the electric grid, all the power sources are going out, and people are going crazy. So, so he's it, kind of sticking to what he knows. Yes, yeah. So if you're into the end of the world kind of things, then uh, this might be uh, something you want to watch on Peacock. Um, we've got something on Disney on the eighth as well. Uh, cars on the road, so we get a little uh, little cars action. Yeah, Zoe Wilson and uh, Larry the Cable Guy coming back for that. I want to say yes. I think I think I, think I, I heard yes, but okay. I, I'm not certain. Uh, about that one but some good animated stuff for all the ages uh your show comes out on the ninth my show cobra kai oh yeah duh You're, okay you, you were talking about thing. disney plus so i was like oh, no it can't be x-men 97 <laughs> not yet no <laughs> no well uh, so cobra kai on mm-hmm. the ninth you, you excited about that oh, one? god yeah uh, i don't know why but for some reason that show just just is everything I wanted and uh, that I didn't know I, I wanted, I guess. Uh, the, even the the bad guy from Karate Kid Three is coming, so I'm I'm really stoked. They're bringing back everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Season season five looks like it's going to be a good one. Mm-hmm. So excellent. Yeah. Uh, from the makers of Bob's Burgers, we've got Central Park season three on Apple. Okay. I haven't watched Central Park. Yeah. I've never really liked the animation for Bob's Burgers, even though I love Bob's Burgers. Yeah. So watching another animated one in the same vein is is actually a hard sell for me because I think I only have enough space in my heart for for one of those. Yeah, honestly, I think it's uh, H. John Benjamin's voice mm. that that does it for me. Yeah, because that dude's just got one hell of a unique sound. A- absolutely. Yeah, and and I love the stuff that he's in. So. Yeah, I'll have to give that a that show a watch. Central Park. Central Park on Apple. Yeah, because I got Apple TV until February. Yeah, check to... it out. I had to put a good. Tell me about it. Yeah, I had to put a reminder on my calendar of when to uh, when to cancel (laughs) Apple TV. So I'll get a notice like one day before. (laughs) Yeah, you're doing the same thing that we're doing. Yeah, just (laughs) months at a time. Yeah. Uh, The best surprising news. Oh my God! The MCU has dropped a surprise season three of The Punisher. It takes place in a different universe. Really? And he's actually called American Gigolo. But what? Are you messing with me? <laughs> Are you messing with me? I haven't heard of anything about this. So, so John, uh, he, yeah, he is going to be in a show called American Gigolo. It's not, it, and I decided it would be much inter- more interesting to watch it <laughs> as season it. three of The Punisher in a different universe. Damn it, <laughs> JD, you're giving my hopes up, man. You can't be, you can't mess with my emotions in these ways. American Gigolo, <laughs> Punisher edition. Damn it. Damn, I was so happy. I was so happy there for a second. Yeah, and, that, and that's going to be on Showtime. Okay. Showtime's got that one. Uh, <laughs> you, you've derailed me. I can't. I don't even know where we're going now. No, no, seriously. Watch the trailer for that uh-huh. and, and think, this is season three of The Punisher, and it will completely change how you view that that trailer. So Isn't he? <laughs> isn't a gigolo a dude, like a male prostitute? Yeah, yeah. How am I supposed to get a Punisher? <laughs> well, I mean, there'd be like a maybe S and M Punisher. It's you know Earth six one eight. Oh okay. It's, you know. Oh yeah, that's a that's yeah, a it's kinky complete, universe. Completely different. Yeah, universe. it's so kinky. <laughs> <laughs> Any other TV shows? <laughs> 
Uh, on the 13th, uh, the animated Cyberpunk hits on Netflix. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, like, try that one out at least. Yeah. If it's and, anything uh, like the game, we're, there's, it's going to be graphic. I don't know. I haven't it, played a game. Yeah, I haven't seen a trailer for it, so I'm not sure. Yeah. But, and, well, I liked the game a lot better than a lot of people did. Yeah. I thought it was pretty decent. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. And then we've got uh, Vampire Academy on Peacock, which is a uh, vampire romance kind of thing. But it it reminded me of the old um, uh, Vampire the Masquerade show from back in the, God, I think early 2000s, maybe I 90s. Even... Yeah, it, it only got one season, even though it was really good because the, the lead actor died in a motorcycle crash. Oh. Yeah, dang. so... And yeah, that was that was pretty sad. Yeah. But th- those are the TV shows coming up. Um, any TV news you got? I honestly no. This has been a a weird week for television news. I mean, we've been have we've some. been watching and yep. Having yeah, I time. had the arcane thing on there. Um, mm-hmm. went in the streaming thing, but yeah, arcane man. Yeah, definitely watch that. Yep. All right, let's let's go into anime. Anime. All right. So, uh, I finally finished all of the dubs for, uh, this past season. Okay. And, um, I've got my two that I think people probably should watch out of the, the list. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that I finished up with was Executioner and Her Way of Life, which was, it was fun. It was, uh, very Yuri and it was Esekai dropped on its head. Right. Because the the premise of this, and I loved the first four episodes, didn't like the rest of it as much. But the first four or five episodes were great because dude gets brought here from another world, just like all the other Esekai. He's supposed to have powers, but they, they kick him out of the castle saying that he's got null ability. Mm-hmm. Well, it turns out his, well, he find, he's found by a priestess. He's, you know poor homeless on the streets and all that. He's found by a priestess who is going to take care of him, you know, get him situated to the world and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And, um, and so she eventually discovers what his null power is, which is basically to nullify everything. He can destroy whatever he wants to destroy. Yeah. And she kills him. Oh, because her job is to kill all these crappy people that are coming to her world. They get summoned and and so it's from the point of view of an everyday, well, not an everyday, but a, a person who is trying to get rid of all these people that they're bringing in from this other other. That's world. an interesting. The twist. premise was great. Yeah, yeah, and and it was definitely fun. And it just lost after the fifth episode. You said they they resolved the first story arc yeah. around episode five six, and that was a good part. Okay, the second story arc, I just irritating villain for the second story arc and just kind of it, it wasn't as unique as okay. the first one so it didn't quite make it into my top rankings all right uh but the two that did um spy family mm-hmm. which is on crunchy roll it's an action comedy yeah i need to i need to get on that one it, it's definitely the what i think is probably the best of this past season uh didn't make it into my top shelf though yeah it got it for me. It got like an eight or whatever. But if you if you like an act good anime action comedy, wholesome, mm-hmm. it's cool. It's cool. Okay. So Spy Family. It's by Cloverworks. Okay. And you know Cloverworks has the best one out this whole year. Is it the the same one that did uh, my dress up drama? Yep. yep. Same studio. Yeah. So, they that they the way they animate like expressions and stuff is pretty good. Cloverworks has got it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're they're really on a roll. Yeah. Um, another studio that I really like, JC Staff. This one's on High Dive. Uh, Demon Girl Next Door. Okay. Supernatural comedy. Um, some Yuri tones to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so that would be the other one that I'd say people should check out. Okay. So those two. Spy Family and Demon Girl Next Door. So, you, you, so you're you saying Spy Family. Is it not Spy X Family? Yeah, I found out that the X is apparently silent. What in the hell? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, this is this is confusing. Yeah, it's written Spy X Family, but you don't say the X, apparently. Huh. So you just say Hunter Hunter? I guess so. It <laughs> might be. It might be. I, I don't know. Because I know in like, Fortnite, the X is, stands for uh, crossover. And stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. But Over accord- according to other sources, apparently, the X is silent, so... 
And, and that's all I've got for anime. All right. Uh, I do have a little bit of news. Uh, Funimation is raising prices by two bucks starting uh, October 5th. Yeah, and if you're somebody who's looking to get into anime, Funimation is definitely not where you want to go uh, because it's now the backlog of anime. Um, all of the new stuff, only the the new stuff that would have gone to Funimation is going to Crunchyroll, and all the dubs are going to Crunchyroll. Mm-hmm. So uh, definitely um, do Crunchyroll before Funimation these days. You know the weird thing is? They're both both the streaming services are owned by the same company. Yeah, Sony so probably should just merge them. Crunchyroll first, and then bought Funimation, yeah. and then has now merged them. Yeah, or is in the process of merging them. Um, so I I don't know if they'll eventually do. I think they can't do away with Funimation without upsetting a lot of people because that's where people have bought stuff, uh, and that's where the digital archives are. <laughs> Yes, yeah. the companies you don't own it, so companies have definitely nixed it before. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're raising the price to get people to switch. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Who knows? All right, you got anything else? All right, let's move on to video games. Video games. So what have you played? Uh just Fortnite. Still. Fortnite, Fortnite, Fortnite. I know, I know. Uh, I and I really haven't played that much. I maybe played two matches. Uh. I I saw a clip online of uh, Goku where the island starts out, somehow set up a tent, got a Kamehameha out, shot it to where the bus was going to spawn, killed everybody on the bus, won the game right away. What? Not sure if it's real or not. (laughs) It looks real to me. But I was like, you know what? These are some of the people that I'm playing against. I just, I don't want to deal with it right now. I don't, I don't, I just don't want that headache. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, I mean it's an incredible clip, but I don't I didn't know I didn't know you could do I, that. I call shenanigans. I hope I, I hope it is. I really do. I hope it's shenanigans as well. But there's this like the feed of everybody dying just goes ape shit. Like I don't even think they had a a chance to thank the bus driver. It was just blah 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 blah. That's weird. Oh, yeah. It's really weird. Uh, victory royal. <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah, that's all I've been playing. What have you I, been playing? I, I call BS on that. I'm, I'm just saying. I'll have to I'll have to find that clip and post yeah. it to the Facebook page. But who knows? Who knows? The Stranger Things have happened. Mm. Uh, I finished Soul Hackers 2. Okay. Uh, Soul Hackers 2, you know, ever since Xenoblade Chronicles, I'm having to really change how I give my evaluations because number scores just don't work. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a great game if you loved the PS2 JRPGs. And I'm talking all of them, not just the good ones. But oh. if you loved the bad ones as well, yeah, this is kind of middle of the road. This is somewhere between a good PlayStation 2 JRPG and a bad PlayStation 2 JRPG. I'm not somewhere sure that's a selling point. Well, exactly. It's yeah. it's only for those people yeah. like me who I loved even the bad JRPGs from that time. Okay. So so I really enjoyed this game, but I would not recommend it to most people. Yeah. All the the normies and the casual ca- casuals, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Not. <laughs> yeah, if if you like your JRPGs, old not old school because it's not retro. It's PlayStation Two type era okay. kind of gameplay. So it's not like eight bit, sixteen bit. It's still good graphics and decent yeah. graphics and all that. Yeah, yeah. So Soul Hackers Two. Okay. Uh, I played a lot of the other stuff. Just gave a cursory pass on uh, Tiny Ken and Opus and Midnight Fight Express and Commandos Three. On Game Pass. Okay. Uh, best one was probably, in my opinion, Tinykin, which was kind of like a Pikmin clone. With oh, some fun oh, animation. Yeah. So puzzler, platformer. Okay. Um, yeah, it was it was decent. Not, not my kind of thing, so mm. I didn't stick with it. Uh, but what I have been playing a lot of since yesterday was Disney Dreamlight Valley. Yeah. Which is Disney's answer to Animal Crossing. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's it's good. It could have been mind blowing if they'd done one thing for me, though. What's that? The Disney characters aren't voiced. Oh, the, it's disgusting. And, and, that's, and that's half of the fun of a Disney character. Is, yeah, is you know their voice and their interactions, and they've got little sound bites. Yeah, but it's all text. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. Disney, you got a lot of money. What are you doing? And, and gross. If, if they had done that. <laughs> 
Well, you know, Animal Crossing does the same thing. Yeah, but they get away with it. Yeah. You know, that nobody knows what those voices are. Uh, yeah. 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 No, nobody nobody really has anything to connect with, but you know, as as far as the characters and it would have made the game much better. So much better if it had full voice acting in the game. Oh man, that's kind of disappointing. It it was it is very disappointing. But I still am enjoying the game. Yeah. I'm still probably going to keep playing it. This is one of those games I can see me putting a hundred hours in. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch it because I know what <laughs> I know what happens when I get into those types of games. Uh, that's uh, like we played in shifts for the first yeah. Animal Crossing on the GameCube. So you know that Drake meme where he's like, like <laughs> yeah, that. That's yeah. that's what I do to <laughs> those types of don't, games. Don't even tempt me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So if you're looking, if you liked Animal Crossing, you're looking for something different. Uh, this is is pretty good. Okay. You know, I I've been farming and mining and you know, doing the little cooking quests and all this stuff. There's no real fighting in it, so it's all just those kind of, like, yeah. uh, crafting scenarios and mm-hmm. quests and stuff. So, oh. yeah. But it, it's Disney. I, I, I didn't really care for Animal Crossing because I didn't connect with any of the characters, but it's Disney characters, so I connect with them automatically, so for me it makes it a little more fun. So is it just, like, the Mickey Mouse gang that's in there? Is it more? Uh, I think it's Pixar and Disney combined. Okay. So I... I've met Goofy, Merlin, Mickey, Ratatouille. Oh God! Uh, Did he try uh, to jump on your head? Remy, Remy from Ratatouille. Um, or was he already on somebody's head? He was in the kitchen, oh. <laughs> and I got him to open up a shop. So you know, uh, Scrooge McDuck. Oh, I love uh, Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. So some some really fun characters. Um, a game that is on Game Pass right now that if you haven't played it, you probably should. Immortals: Phoenix Rising. Oh God. That's a good one. Is it? Mm-hmm. I, I played it really I think we were it. talking about getting that for the PS5, weren't we? I did get it for okay. the PS5 and played it. Uh, yeah. I haven't played it on Game Pass because I've, I've played it there. You got to get your points, bro. I know. You know, know. how to beat it. Go get them. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, I get, if I get to where I'm getting tired of, uh, you know, Dreamlight Valley, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, right now it's going to be all Dreamlight Valley for a while. Yeah. Uh, coming up, new games coming up. We got, um, oh no, this is a free one. Uh, I love the oh. freebie section. Yeah, I do too. So part of the freebie section, uh, Epic Games this week is coming out with a, a free game, a uh, hundred days wine making simulator. Oh, so. oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Vinegar sour. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't do wine, man. I've tried, I've tried and tried and tried. I just don't like the flavor. The yeah. weird, it feels like there's a vortex just sucking out all the all the goodness that's, that's there. I don't even know. How I, to I'll stick with my beer. And yeah. I'm Italian. I'm Italian. So oh, that's bad. okay. But also another off putting thing is just smashing it with toes. I don't want to be a part of that. <laughs> I, who wants it? Who wants it? That's toe I want, juice. I want a picture of the person smashing the grapes before I drink it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so I, I can decide I, they need to, that's what they need to have on the label this is the person that smashed <laughs> yeah. these grapes uh, dude, and then I, you can decide whether or not you want to drink the wine i mean i hate feet anyway it does it, 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 it that would not make a difference for me at all like i just like little toe jam crusties going into the bottle and just, no no thank you uh <laughs> there, there's nobody that you would drink the wine of if they if they crushed it maybe salma hayek okay. from uh, when, b- back in the day when she was in uh from dust till dawn She's still pretty hot, even though she's fifty six now. Oh yeah, yeah, she's yeah. still gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, that may, maybe maybe her, and that's that, that would be the only one. Okay, yeah, because that was a that was a good scene. That was a good oh, scene. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> got derailed there. Uh, uh, yeah. You got any other releases? Uh yeah, yeah, we got a bunch of releases coming out this week. There, there's a release called Circus Electrique. And it reminds me of Darkest Dungeon, uh, kind of a strategy yeah. um, role playing kind of game. Um, Darkest Dungeon was really yeah, good. I really yeah. dug it. And the reviews coming out for it are very good. Really? Uh, my only downside is it's, I think it's 20 bucks, but there's no physical copy. And you uh. know, I like to buy my physical copies. This is definitely one that I will wait <clears throat> for. But if you don't mind spending 20 bucks for a decent game like that, and that's coming out well i know they're coming out with uh a lot of them that do the digital releases like if they do good they'll sell a physical copy later on down the road oh okay um limited run i know does a bunch of a bunch of that sort of stuff I'll have to keep i think my eye out. yeah i think there's a few other 
companies that do that stuff too. Yeah, right now it's just digital. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if, if there's a physical copy, I would have picked it up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so <laughs> a fun one coming out on the seventh. Nine Noir Lives. Uh, it's on the PC and it's about cat detectives. Oh wow. That so would be a good so one to go a, into a after noir, story. Yeah, a yeah. noir cat detective. And it it's uh oh God. it's full of, it's full of puns. Yeah. It's full of puns. Oh my, oh God. my gosh. So What's that for? It it's for anybody who wants a good laugh. No, like what what uh systems. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Is there any systems that it's coming over? No, no, none. none. No, the none. PC. No. PC. All right. Damn. Uh, <laughs> I might pick it up just just because of what you just did there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the trailer made it look pretty funny. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. Uh, an action RPG scroller based in the Edgar Allan Poe Ooh, universe. Yeah. Uh, so a dark anime uh, type action scroll RPG scroller uh, coming out for all the systems. Uh, Black Witchcraft. Wow. That it looked be... pretty cool. Yeah, that, that sounds interesting. Uh, the one game that I am buying this week, though, is Steel Rising. Sold like... I'm it, surprised. It, but it's got, a, it's got a difficulty slider. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been reading a lot of uh, people that are saying that that makes it worth buying and it's a good step in the, it's a step in the right direction for the future souls games i i agree yeah i, I loved the studio's previous game greedfall mm-hmm. um they're not a triple a studio they're they're a very good double a studio okay so it's not gonna have you know the triple a polish uh but well, hell, spiders some of the, does some really good stuff yeah some of the triple a stuff doesn't have the triple a uh, polish uh-huh. anymore. I admit that's avengers oh <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's my pick of the week it's still rising okay uh there is uh splatoon 3 coming out for the nintendo yeah so apparently that one had some early copies shipped out where people are already playing it dude i gotta tell you as far as shooters go like uh arena shooters or whatever uh you would classify that as that is a very intense fast-paced type of game like I, I I've only played the first one. Uh, maybe actually maybe I'd play the second one. I don't I don't remember which one it was, but man, it's fast paced. Mm. My kids were kicking my my butt left and right. <laughs> I'm too old for those games yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah, apparently. Apparently, me too. Oh, uh, you got any other news or anything? Yeah, I got one more game. Okay. Oh God. Oh, he's giving me the look. <laughs> you can't see it, but I so, do. So I know how you're a fan of <laughs> Castlevania. Uh huh. And uh, in the Metroidvania theme of things, there's a new game coming out, mm-hmm. and it's called Romancelvania. Uh, oh no! Is it like a Monster Girl dating sim? It's coming. It's coming out for everything. Okay, it's coming out for everything. Um, here is the breakdown of the the description for the game: uh, Abs and sexual tension, Romancelvania. <laughs> Uh, Bachelor's Bat Chiller's oh, Curse is a visually stunning action RPG with uh, a cast of sexy monsters that you won't be able to resist. <laughs> you play as the legendary playboy vampire himself, Drac, as he slays and lays his way across Transylvania. Oh my god. So just just for you, Nick, my buddy, Romancelvania. And it's is, coming out for all systems? Uh, all systems, September wow. 12th. Wow. Well, that's another trailer. After watching the trailer for Kaichu, I don't think I'm going to get that one. Uh, no. But I'll watch the trailer for this one. What is it called again? Romancelvania. Romancelvania. All right. I will give the trailer a watch. Yeah, if, you should uh... definitely give the trailer a watch. <laughs> even, even if you don't buy the game, everybody should watch the trailer. Just is it because... ridiculous? It is, it is so ridiculous. <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh, man. All right. I got a and, couple news. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hit us with video games. That's all I got. All right. Uh, there's a AAA Ninja Turtles game in the works planned for next year. Ooh. Yeah, and that's going to be... It's been a while since I've played any sort of other Ninja Turtle games besides, like, throwbacks to mm. the arcade or just replaying the arcade games and stuff. So uh, excited for that. It'd nice. be cool. We need an open sewer uh, Ninja Turtle game. Oh, yeah. We yeah. should have had that a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, Valve is designing the next Steam Deck with streaming in mind. Uh, let's see. Sony has redesigned the inside of a PS5 to use a lot less power. 
Interesting. Yeah. And the Xbox Elite Controller Series 2 is coming in at $125 because it's going to sell the accessories separately. And I remember a time where the controller was considered an accessory. Yeah. yeah. So there's accessories to the accessory? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm guessing like back paddles, different sticks, different <laughs> D-pad. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you get a very, very sturdy, strong controller for 125 bucks, which makes... It's a lot easier to swallow for me. Yeah. Uh, instead of paying like two, three hundred. I mean, I, I think I've seen controllers go all the way up to four hundred bucks. Wow. And that's like for arcade sticks and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which I desperately want as well. Mm. Uh, but I'll probably end up building my own of those. But anyway. Um, yeah. So if you're looking for a very sturdy controller, if it's anything like the Series 1, worth it. In my opinion. Yeah, I, I don't play a lot of games that really need that kind of responsiveness. Mm -hmm. So for me, the, the whole Elite thing is not really something I pay much attention to. Yeah. But I know for a lot of people who shooters and, and whatnot, um, competitive stuff, definitely yeah. something to get. Yeah, the trigger stops alone were <clears throat> awesome for me. Oh. Uh, especially, I think I think that one had the adjustable ones. And it, it, it were good for first-person shooters. Worked pretty good for Monster Hunter. Mm. So yeah, and I dig it. I'll probably end up getting one, unfortunately, because <laughs> it's just it's, it's just Nick be classic Nick. That's all right. That's, class, <laughs> that's the thing you want. It's all good. Uh, that's that's good. all I got for uh, video games. Uh, same here. Um, but I do have some comic book stuff. Oh yeah, you want to throw that in the other category? Yeah, let's go on to other then. I guess. All right. Other geekly things. Uh, so this week coming out a couple of books to to look out for. Uh, if you are a fan of the old Battletoads, Ooh. there's an art book coming out for Battletoads. Oh, man. I, I have some serious nostalgia for that. Oh, yeah. 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 So. It was it was so cool how they like morph their bodies into different, like a wrecking ball or a ram's head or something, depending uh, on... One of the fun, yeah. one of the absolute best games yeah. out of that, that era, Battletoads. Yep. So. And a lot, of, a lot of sibling fights from that game as well, if I recall correctly. And me and my buddy Shane, we used to we used to play a lot of that. It's <laughs> good stuff. Uh, also coming out, our um, breasts are my favorite thing in the world. Hell yeah, yeah, volume four. Oh my god, there's four volumes. I got some yeah. catching up to do. <laughs> it's actually a uh, it's a Yuri. Mm -hmm. So basically, two girls are friends. One with small breasts, one with large breasts. And uh, <laughs> the hijinks that ensued between the two of them, yeah, the the envy and the whatnot and mm -hmm. stuff. It, it's it's a fun little comedy. Uh, she Hulk is getting a complete collection for the uh, the author Soul Run, and this is one of those that I'm really torn about. It's the same reason that my favorite character is hard for me to collect right now, because when you got a comic book where you love the writer but you dislike the artist, ah. Uh. It, it's a tough sell, and this is one of those for me. I don't like the artwork. The writer's really good. Not sure if I'm going to pick this one up, even though I try to get a lot of the She-Hulk storylines. So it's a collection of the... It's the entire 2014 run, mm -hmm. uh, like 12 issues and a few extra, like I think an annual or something. Dude, I might that... pick that one up just based on... Like I know nothing about She Hulk besides the show. And the I the like writing the... is really good. Yeah, and, and you might like the artwork. Okay, the artwork's just not for me. Um, the She Hulk, <laughs> the the She Hulk series. I don't like that... how you said that. <laughs> I, I I got a little elitist, didn't I? Yeah, you did. I, I, oh my god! <laughs> sorry, sorry, buddy. Sorry, I didn't didn't mean that. I'll, I'll shove my oh, snobbery man. and my snootiness back in this drawer here. <laughs> Um, sorry about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. So my, my favorite picks for She-Hulk would be the run right before that. Okay. Um, I liked both the, the writer and the artist for that run, even though there's two different artists. Oh. Um, they switched artists around episode 25 or so. Okay. It's, it's like a 40, 50, uh, issue run. Okay. And I, I actually... Some of the She-Hulk imagery that you see is taken from a lot of the covers for that series. Oh, the one before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All which right. is, I think, She-Hulk's third series. Mm -hmm. Four, no, fourth series. Because, yeah, she's had like seven now. Yeah? So, yeah. Oh, man. Ah, God, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. I'll probably end up picking it up. I've been catching up on my uh, graphic novel reading, mm -hmm. so... 
yeah it it's it's a good read um the other book that i'm probably going to get a copy of even though i've got all the comics Mm -hmm. is there's an uh x-men epic collection coming out for the dissolution rebirth which is issues 248 to 267 yeah and this part of the x-men covers uh the transformation of betsy bradock into oh captain britain no no this is 1989 oh um, so this is way back in the history. Oh, X-Men. okay. So this yeah. is where Betsy Braydock switched bodies with, uh, Kanan, the assassin. Oh yeah. Oriental. Yeah. So this is where Betsy Braydock went from British to Asian. Okay. So that's in this story set as well as the first appearance of Gambit. Oh, so Gambit starts in this timeline too. Yeah. Gambit was one of my favorites as a kid. Yeah. So if you're interested in, in those two storylines, this mm. is a, a good part of the X-Men to, to pick up on. Hell yeah, yeah. My, that one might be a definite buy for me. It's a pretty good set, even though this is. It's kind of where the X Men fell out of favor. Claremont it kind of faded out at this point, okay. um, in popularity, mm-hmm. and this is like a year before the second X Men line launches. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, still good stuff though. All right. I'm going to get a copy of it, even though I've got all the issues already. Yeah. Um, just so I can have the collected works. Hell yeah. Yeah, let me know when you put that order in. Uh, I will. Um, and I got a couple things for others as well. Yeah. Um, we'll start off with, uh, with the dessert. Uh, Nirvana wins yet another dismissal of the Naked Baby lawsuit on Nevermind's cover. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so another, another win for uh, Nirvana. And then uh, Dave Grohl. I think I saw something where he broke down in a Taylor Hawks and, uh, Hawkins tribute concert where Taylor Hawkins' son was playing the drums. Oh. Um, you know, he, he died uh, unexpectedly. Uh, his son took over for the drums, and they, and I guess they just rocked that show uh, nice. as a tribute for him. So that was, that was really good. Nice. Uh, and then uh, for the vegetables, uh, we'll start off with one that's a little easier to swallow. Uh, Netflix ad supported tier launches November 1st. Oh, okay. So, yeah, if you have, I'm hoping it's not the base tier. I'm hoping that they're going to do something that's even like a little cheaper based on ads like Hulu's doing, mm. but who knows? Uh, I, like I said, I'm paying money for it. The first time I see ads is when I cancel. Yeah. 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 Um, and then the worst news of the week is, uh, Jane Fonda. She got diagnosed with the non, non Hodgkin's lymphoma. lymphoma. Yeah. yeah. Um, started chemo, very positive. Okay. Um, I actually liked, I th- like after I saw her in the Netflix show, uh, God, what, what is that show called? With the comedy? Yeah. With, with her and, um. Yeah, I can't even remember the other lady's name. Oh, my mother really liked that one. Yeah. Now, now I can't think of it. <clears throat> oh, Gracie, Frank and Gracie. Yeah. Frankie and Grace? Grace and Frankie. Close to that. Yeah. One, one of those. Of it's, a, it's one of those. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I watched a couple episodes with my mom, and, mm-hmm. and it was pretty good. Yeah. So I, I've, I've watched it all. Uh, even at, like after the first season, I, I just thought it was funny and, yeah. and stuff. Sure. So I went back and watched some of Jane Fonda's older movies. So uh, I'm awesome. a fan. You're a little, little fan now. Yeah. You're a yeah. Jane Fonda fan. I absolutely. Uh, that's all I have for... Uh, I've other. got one thing I put in rumors... I've got two things. You want to go first, or you want to you want a sandwich? Let's sandwich. All right, we'll sandwich. All right. Uh, So, just a preface about rumors: what we do at the end of the show is we hit some rumors and we talk about whether or not we think they're true, give it a rating, and then we talk about how much we want it to happen, give that a rating, yeah, and move on. Yeah. All right. So the first one up: Elizabeth Olsen and Henry Cavill are heading to the House of the Dragon, is what people are saying. Hmm. Now heading, I missed heading to yeah I missed the first episode of that or I mean, I've I've missed it I yeah. haven't watched it yet because I don't have HBO Max well that would require them to add more characters that they didn't plan on at at the beginning of the show which is I mean it's possible certainly yeah uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say no I I don't give that one a very positive I I think that. I just don't see it happening, because I, I think with this one the characters are already pretty much set. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say probably two. 
yeah. for if it will happen. And if I want it to happen, I'm going to give it a zero. Uh, yeah, yeah. Elizabeth Olsen, I wouldn't mind seeing her in a medieval setting just to see how how she acts. But Henry Cavill is the Witcher. He's got better things yeah, to do. Yeah, don't take his ass away from that. He's got much better yeah. things to do. Yeah. Can't, can't, like Yennefer. Season three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, what's your rumor? Uh, this is an interesting fact that I think fits in the rumor category. Okay. So the last issue of, it wasn't Batman, it was a DC issue, um, actually came out with the name for the Joker. And the line in the comic is, the Joker was a man, and his name is Jack Oswald White. And supposedly, this is the very first time the Joker's real name has ever been said in DC Comics. Isn't... No, never mind. Os- Oswald is the penguin's penguin. first name. Yeah. Okay. Cobblepot. 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 Yes, that's it. Okay. Um, so Jack Oswald White is supposedly the Joker's real name. First time it's ever been spoken. Didn't they say it was Jerome for a while? And that's where the, the whole rumor is. Yeah. Because the comic line, it, it's, it involves time travel and oh, some wow. other timey-wimey things. That sounds, so, that sounds eerily... Like the like the plot of uh, Endgame. Yeah. So my <laughs> my question to you is: This going to be something that sticks with canon, or is this something that just kind of is a? It happened in this little setting, but it doesn't really exist. God, I'm not really up to snuff on DC, but it just seems. I don't want to say anything that's going to make our audience unhappy, but it's it seems to me like they're just throwing pickles at a window and hoping one sticks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, because of the time, timey-wimey, time travel involved, I'm going to say it's pretty low, too. Okay. I, I think it's just going to be non-conical. Yeah, because when when in the, you know, the Batman storyline or anything, has have they ever, have they ever time traveled? I now have, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It just seems it seems weird. Like obviously he's got the money, he's got the technology that he can do it because Wayne Enterprises. I mean, it's like Stark, yeah, doing it. So I see it as a ripoff of Endgame. I I pretty much have a hard time swallowing anything involving time travel. Yeah, just just because it to me it it screams not real. The whole. And I'm surprised I've enjoyed the multiverse as much as I have. I see. Now it kind of makes fun of itself, though. Yeah. In Endgame, like they were talking, they were making all those jokes about time travel movies. They brought up Time Cop, Back to the Future, uh, Hot Tub Time Machine, yeah. even. So I mean, if it's making fun of itself, it knows what it's doing. Yeah. And and that's what makes it okay for me. Yeah, I think for me, the whole time travel stuff—you don't know what to believe or not believe anymore. Mm-hmm. It just becomes kind of maybe. Yeah, big, so everything's a big question mark. Oh God, so what? What? What are we ranking or rating here? So do we if want it, it to happen? We, we kind of said, do we want it to happen? Do we want the Joker to actually be identified now as a real person? I kind of always thought he was, so I'm going to oh. give it a five because I'm neutral on it. Okay. Yeah. I I think for me it takes away from the Joker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think part of the mystery has always been you never really knew who where he came from or who he was, so. I'm gonna say. Uh, I always no. thought. Okay, so I always thought his name was Jerome, and I always thought that his origin story was he fell into the acid. In the movies, they've named him, I think. Yeah. And even the TV show, but I don't think they've ever done it in the comics. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I need to. I need to read more comics. But I'm. I'm not a DC expert. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm, I'm not just taking this means. from another source, and mm-hmm. who knows what they know. But anyway. Yeah, I know next to nothing about DC except for I like a few characters. And I watch a few of the TV shows. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So my last one is uh, D23, which is coming up in a couple days. Yep. Okay. So they're going to announce some major casting roles. Um, John Boyega, Henry C- Cable. I hate autocorrect. <laughs> uh, Henry Cavill. <laughs> you want him to be Cable anyway. Yeah. So. Jo- Jody Comer, I think. Okay. So, yeah, okay. So yeah. some of these got autocorrected. <laughs> so now I'm guessing. I'm guessing on some of these names. <laughs> Daisy Edgar Jones, John Krasinski, Giancarlo Esposito, and Denzel Washington to be announced on stage, or uh, yeah, on stage by Fahey himself with some of the actors in attendance. There's a lot of ifs in that statement. Like, yeah. Like, which, do, do I think all of them hit the mark? I, I'm going to say no. 
I don't think all of those will hit the mark. Okay, so I don't know who Jody is. I don't know she, who Daisy uh, Edgar Jones is. Uh, free guy, Ryan. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's her. Well, I love her. Yeah, she's yeah. cool. Okay, so I wouldn't mind her in there as yeah. Psylocke. As Psylocke, like, yeah, there we go. make a yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Uh, do you know who Desi, De- Desi, Daisy Edgar Jones is? No, I don't know that one. Okay. Um, it, well, Henry, it, she's not, she's not Rogue One, is she? No, that's, uh, Ridley. What? That was Daisy Ridley? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so John Boyega, I could see hopping in there. I think he, he would make like a cool cable or a bishop or something. Isn't he kind of done with Disney though? I think I think so. I've been seeing headlines. I haven't yeah. read any articles about it. Yeah, he's I, the, I think he's he's the said... one that I disbelieve the most because he's come out so much against his Star was... Wars stuff. Yeah, I thought it was just Star Wars. Is it like as Disney as a company, or is well, that, it just Star Wars the brand? That's what I'm wondering about. Is is he done with Disney, or is he just done with Star Wars? Yeah, and he, he seems. You know, if I was burned by a studio, I don't know that I want to be in any of their properties. But who knows? Yeah, I, I guess I don't know about the whole struggle that he's had with them, so I gotta keep I gotta keep my mouth shut. I, I don't know the details either. Yeah, I think he's just upset, and and even I'm upset that he feels like his character w- became a bit part. Uh, and I, I agree. Yeah, he was probably sold a line that he was going to be a a very large part of the new Star Wars. Okay, that universe. makes sense. That and, that aligns with the like the tone of all the headlines and stuff that yeah. I was reading. I'll have to go home and, and read a little bit about it. Yeah, I I like I said, I don't know though, but that's to me what it sounds like. He got sold something and they didn't deliver. Ah oh, man, that's too bad. Um so we got him, uh Henry Cavill. Um uh, we Which had the we, rumor we know who he is. Yeah, we had the rumor that he was gonna be Hyperion. Uh, they've got so many people in Thunderbolts already. Mm-hmm. I, I just can't see them bringing in another one. The The roster is already full. They've got the strong guy. They've got Abomination. Yeah. I, I honestly, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we've got John Krasinski, which I'm assuming would make another appearance as, uh, Mr. Fantastic. You know, uh, Giancarlo Esposito. Um, if he gets the Professor X role, good. If he, yeah, uh, I could see, I could see him doing a few roles. Um, hmm. I th- I think he'd make a pretty good Professor X man. <laughs> you know, I think the thing about this rumor that really screams no to me is the fact that I I think if they're going to bring some group in like this, it'd be like Eternals, where they're all part of the same cast mm-hmm. for the same movie. And this sounds like a bunch of hopefuls for different bits and pieces. Because why why introduce Krasinski and not the rest of the Fantastic Four? Uh, maybe Jody Comer or Daisy Edgar Jones is going to play. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Uh, Henry Cavill could be the Human Torch. Yeah. I don't think he's right for the role, but he could be. Yeah. Could be. Could be. <laughs> uh, let's see. Denzel Washington probably not the Human Torch. No. Who would he be? He could play a bishop. He could he play could. an old ass like he time could. traveler bishop. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. So my my rating on this is I don't think it's likely. It may be a few of those characters, but I don't think the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. I'll give it a five too. Uh, uh, now, do we want it to happen? There's a lot of a lot of big names there. I a I lot of big mind names, it. but I say again, I'm on the nope. Don't I don't want it to happen because I want them to continue to tie in the stuff they already have. Yeah, I want them to talk about tie-ins for things that they haven't tied in yet that are just kind of sitting out there. Mm-hmm. I want them to bring back Angelina Jolie from Eternals and say she's going to be in this movie because of this thing. And then yeah. they haven't touched Blade enough. They haven't touched Black Knight enough. Mm-hmm. So I don't want new characters. Yeah, yeah, they are introducing an awful lot. And to people that aren't, like, don't know who these people are, I can't imagine how hard it is to keep track of all these yeah. uh, characters. So, you know what? After hearing your your side of things, I'm I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go over to your side now. We've got all these teased cameos already. Yeah, I want I want to see where they're at. Yeah, I'd like to see the Black I don't, Knight. I don't want more teased cameos. Yeah, I want more integration. But Blade's coming out next year, next November. And I want him to be in other things. Yeah. I want to see him in three or four other movies leading up to Blade. That I mean, would be I, cool. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I want. I don't yeah. want new cameos. Yeah. I, I want 
more of the stuff we've already been teased. I would like to see Deadpool, Cable, and Bishop, the the trifecta of mine. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to see I, them in everything. Yeah, it's not that I don't want to see them. It's that I don't want to see them now. I'm ready for it. I know, I know, <laughs> My body yeah, is ready. Are, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. <clears throat> and this, Gamers and Geeks, this has been Ogre. Yeah, episode 10 of Old Guys Geekly Review. Can you believe it? Uh, it's great 10 stuff. episodes, man. That's uh, that's 10 weeks. I know. That's 10, 10 weeks. weeks we've been doing this already. Yeah. All kinds of good stuff. That's two and a half months. Keep listening. Yeah, keep listening. Tune in next time. Yeah, but I don't like what you were saying about the established characters that we already have. We have some I think he was Dark Yeah. Yeah. We got so many. So many. Yeah. And I'm glad you got it.